Stockholm, a capital city of Sweden, hometown of H&M Group. Recently, I attended Fashion Tech Talks conference, so I couldn't help myself but to ask how H&M is implementing technologies in their business strategy. For us, it's more about you know collaborating and have a mutual exchange with entrepreneurs. They provide us with new ideas and new angles on things, and then we together can you know, support them in their way forward to, you know, their success, really. As a big company, we really need to be perceptive about everything happening in the technology field. So we're really looking into most uh, technology right now, I would say. What we're doing now is working with, uh, we're testing voice, 3D, AI, holograms. Uh, so it, it's a lot of different technologies that we explore use the word AI, it's not artificial intelligence for us, it's amplified intelligence. So that means that we work with the whole chain that we do today, like the whole circle from manufacturing, design and buying to retail and uh, so on. So, so we work to amplify all those processes in the whole in the whole chain or the whole circle. The most important thing is to, for us to be very super responsible and, and as an industry to work together to set goals and set a, get a level playing field around AI and what, what are our responsibilities and, and what we can do together. I think that's super, super important. A very evident case would be to be better to predict demand. Uh, so work with fashion forecasting and, and demand uh, driven innovation. So that's really something that we look into a lot. You know, we've set up very high targets for 2030, for example, whereas we will only uh, produce items that are either from um, sustainably sourced or uh, recycled uh, uh, materials. And in order to be able to do that, we of course need to, you know, invest early in these type of innovations uh, and help support the entrepreneurs uh, in their journey. So we invest within uh, sustainable fashion innovative business models and enablers. What we all know is that we can't continue to use resources the way that we do right now. So we want to move towards a circular system, meaning that all resources are kept in the closed loop and, and utilized at the best value at all times. So today, we don't have all the answers on how we're going to get there. There are a lot of gaps when it comes to innovation and technology, especially when it comes to how we can get the clothes back into the system and how old clothes can be turned into new clothes again. So here we need to have a lot of innovations and creativity happening. And one way that we are tackling that is, of course, working together with others. And if I can point out one great example, we have something called the Global Change Award. So we have a foundation and they have set up this, which is the world's biggest innovation challenge. So every year, five winners get one million euro to share to really develop their idea on how we can close the loop for fashion. And we have seen winners like taking algae to color the clothes, or for example, mushrooms and fungi that can be turned into a dress. We have seen, like we talked about today, orange fiber, basically citrus waste that can be turned into a new material. We are seeing that more and more customers care about sustainability, and a big portion want to know more. Where are the products coming from, what material they're made of, and so on. But then we can also see that there are many customers, you know, that just want to do it the right thing. So today it's quite difficult to actually know everything around sustainability and to make sustainable choices. So I think the most important thing is to make it easy for customers to be sustainable and to act sustainably in your everyday life. Everything from choosing the right product to when you don't want it or need it anymore, make it easy to get it back into the system, for example. So I think that's the most important thing, making it easy for customers to do the right thing.